It's like the Shogun here. Welcome to the improved version of my Xenotype Guide and I'm here to give you my opinions and observations for over a year playing Biotech. Okay, first things I need to address is the characteristic and our benchmark. First, on how do I rate Xenotypes? Well, first of all, the combat readiness which identify if a xenotype is capable or efficient at combat, survivability if they can survive the harsh weathers and environment, as well as diseases and injury, production which prioritizes on colony production of course, such as structures, item quality and how frequent they pump out refined items like yayo and stuff. Unity, which affects colony cohesion, this usually affects the social skill of a pawn, their attractiveness, and how well they mesh with other colonies, not to mention their mood buffs or debuffs. And versatility, which affects how many roles your pawn can cover. Well, this will be represented with the radar chart of the baseliner first. And now, let's go to our first Xenotype. Dirt moles are known for their gray skin and gray eyes. Regarding this pawn's versatility, they can cover some of the roles but there are some setbacks to them. One such example is nearsighted which affects range combat and UV sensitivity which affects both mood and speed. Now. Let's go to the combat. In combat, they're only good for melee or short range weapons due to their nearsighted gene. You can utilize dark vision when defending the tunnels or attacking at night. Other factors that you have to include it are UV sensitivity, which slows down the pawn, and slow runner. Overall, a solid 1.5, unlike the base liner, which is flexible in this role. The Dirt Mole have some survivability traits such as fast wound healing which makes the pawn recover twice as fast than a baseliner. They also have a hunger rate of 90% and that's all for their survivability. I'm going to give them a 3 because they perform much better than a baseliner. Now let's go to the productivity of a Dirt Mole. A dirt mole has great mining skills, that means they have a plus 8 on the mining skill. Also, they have a plus 1 in passion. Now, the good thing about a dirt mole is they don't have malices regarding skills. That means they can be flexible and versatile in some situations, for example, like traits or background stories. I'd say a 3.5 because mining is such an important part of the game. And only the Dirt Mole is well suited for its role due to the dark vision. In Unity, they basically function the same as the baseliner. It all depends on the traits, making them suitable for a diverse xenotype colony. For that, I'll give them a 2.5, which is the same score as a baseliner. Genies are the pillar of the community. If you have a genie, you have a steady production line. They look like discounted Walter Whites. Now, versatility. A genie is mainly for production, but they can fulfill other roles too, if you're desperate. Let's say for example, combat. The only roles that a genie can cover are sniper and mortars, due to their delicate and wimp nature. Now, these genes affect the survivability of a genie. For example, wimp prevents you from taking more damage than you can ever sustain except for brain shots but the other trait named delicate multiplies the damage you receive therefore you're gonna take a long time to recover at the hospital and that means your production is also ceased so the genie's car in combat is a 1 while the survivability can be a 2 in productivity they shine so well, especially in crafting and intellectual. With crafting, if your items are of higher quality, let's just say armor, pawns equipping that masterwork armor 
have a higher chance to survive. In their downtime, they can also research due to their high intellectual skill. A genie can easily reach their crafting 15 skill without investing too much, such as a AO factory for your racers, but we'll get to that later. They do have poor agriculture and have an awful social skill. Overall, it's fair to say that I'm gonna give them a 5 because high quality gear and weapons affect the safety of your colony and the quality of the manipulation driven work such as construction and art quality. In Colony Unity, the genie is a dead calm person, meaning they don't start social fights and their mental breaks aren't that aggressive. They are not a destructive kind of person. Overall, it's a 4 because of how cohesive a genie can be with the mental well-being of the colony. Now, the versatility score means that they are only good at being production specialists. I'm going to give them a 1 for that. Oh, SARS. They are roid-dependent killing machines and the eyes of death itself that runs red. Also, all I can say is this Xenotype isn't versatile. Let's jump right into the combat. They are great in both combat skills. That makes them your frontline pawn. Other genes involved with the combat and survival traits of a Hussar. One such gene is super fast wound healing, which makes the Osar heal 4 times faster than a normal baseliner. That also means shorter downtime for this pawn. He can immediately get back to hauling or hunting. Another trait is reduced pain, meaning they can dish out more damage even though they are heavily wounded, especially with the Gojus dependency, but we'll get to that later. Another good gene for survival is unstoppable. If a Hussar is under heavy fire, they can just simply walk away without getting slowed by bullets or arrows. The next genes are purely for survival. Partial Anti-Toxic Lungs when you are fighting in a polluted map and temperature tolerance to both heat and cold. Now, Psychically Deaf affects both unity and survivability. For example, there is a high psychic drone and your other pawns are angsty because they have a negative 30 in their mood. Well, the Hussar isn't affected by this and can simply resume to their duties. If royalty is enabled, your psychasts are ineffective against them. Now, the Hussar sucks at productivity. They have four awful skills. Agriculture social and artistry now the solution for awful agriculture is to make the hussar hunt nothing we can do with the other skills like artistry and social unironically hussar needs a functioning colony yet cannot function in one especially when it comes to social well-being and intermingling with the colony these guys are hyper aggressive, meaning they start more social fights than any type of Xeno. I forgot to mention they also have a hunger rate of 80%. Now let's talk about the biggest malos in the room, which is Goju's dependency. As you can see with the Hussar skills, they cannot live by themselves. They need a production line of Goju's. To make a Gojus, you will need 8 Psychoid Leaves. And that's not all, you also need to make Yeo and have their respective research, Psychoid Refining. Now the other item you need is Neutroamin, which you can only obtain via quest or trading, which the Hussar sucks at. You will need 2 Neutroamin and 1 Yeo to form one Gojus, and you need to research that too. Do not ever pick up a Hussar unless you have production of Gojus because they will need it in every 5 days. If they don't take it 
for five days they become weakened if they don't take it for 30 days they will go into a coma now if they don't take it for 60 days they will outright die fun fact this headache is not affected by crypto sleep caskets how do i know because i had a hussar placed into one and it went past 60 days of not taking gold juice thank you tynan very cool for combat i'll give them a five for survivability i'll give them a four for productivity they can only haul research or construct therefore they have a 1.5 on productivity their unity is a zero and ironically they need a colony to survive yet they act aggressive against others overall the versatility of this pawn is a two neanderthals the ancestors revived on the rim they are known for their stocky looks Anyway, versatility-wise, we can say that this is more of a survival pawn than anything else. So let's get right into it. In combat, they have only one distinct gene, which is strong melee damage. Now, the rest of this gene are negative, which is the slow runner and poor shooting skill. Next genes, however, are intermesh with survivability. First is robust, which makes them take less damage, and reduced pain, which increases pain tolerance. Therefore, it's like a mini hussar, and this beast can tank too many shots or stabs. Strong immunity is a great survival gene, and they have a hunger rate of 80%. Also, they have temperature tolerance. Overall, I rate its combat effectiveness to 1.5 and its survivability into 4. You'll find out later why I gave it a score of 1.5 because the gene itself tackles the versatility of this pawn. Let's move on to the productivity of a Neanderthal. They already have poor intellectual which means that they are going to research much slower than any type of pawn. And this skill that affects unity, which is social, cannot be utilized too because it's poor. And in unity, they are also aggressive, meaning that they don't get along well with other pawns. They start social fights and their mental breaks are aggressive. They also have a higher prison break chance. I'll give their productivity a 1.5 and their unity with 1.5. Now, I'll give you the reasons for these scores. This one gene, which is slow study, will make your life a living hell. They learn at the pace of a turtle, which takes a very long time. But hey, look at the bright side because they don't have some sort of memory loss gene. Overall, this pawn's versatility is mainly on survival, as I said earlier. So I'm gonna be honest and give it a 1.5. Pigskins are basically pigs with two feet. Pigskins are all around pawn and they are my favorite type of Xeno. Keep in mind I'm gonna be honest with my opinions regarding this Xenotype. Anyway, for their versatility they can be anything but there's some setbacks. Now first of all combat. A pigskin has a nearsighted gene which means they are not accurate with long and mid-range weapons. They're stuck with pistols, SMGs, and shotguns. Another combat oriented that is tied to the survival trait is reduced pain. That means they can take more beatings. Another gene that is tied to combat, versatility, and productivity is shorter hands. Your manipulation with this gene is multiplied by 85%. Fret not, this is just a minor negative gene. Let's move on to the purely survival gene traits. Let's start with strong stomach. Now if case cooking was personified on Rimworld, 
this big skin right here will just sit right through it without feeling anything. Food poisoning can be a major colony setback, especially when you're trying to defend something or you have a patient waiting to be tended as your nurse slowly crawls in with food poisoning, trying to tend your injured pawn. Robust digestion is another asset for the pigskin, especially early game. It multiplies the raw nutrition food intake by 180%. Also, it removes the 8 raw food mood debuff which is negative 7 and lastly, strong immunity. Overall, big skins are built to last. Their combat and survivability scores are 1 and 4. Production is up next on this list. The only skill that the pig skin is bad at is cooking. At least the cooking skill is negated by robust digestion and strong stomach. Other than that, they can do what a baseliner can do. Trotter hands, however, is a negative gene and we can't ignore it here. Overall, the production of a pig skin is a 2. And the only gene that affects the unity of the pawns is the pig nose trait. If you don't have a pig nose partner, then the romance chance will be multiplied by 20% which is fine they basically act like baseliners in this area so let's give them a 2.5 here overall it's a versatile Sino, but despite its versatility it may sound like the pigskins are a worse type of baseliner but personally with my experience pigskins are the anchor of the colony so in my honest opinion i'm just gonna give them a three a bit below from the baseliner Hi mates, alright folks let's get right into it. Combat. There's literally nothing we can salvage here. However, if you have royalty enabled, you can use them as supportive psychasters due to their psi sensitive skill. That's all. For that they get zero combat. You may be thinking that they can be psychasters, but not everyone bought royalty DLC so that reasoning is invalid if then if you think they can pass as bullet baits <laughs> you are dead wrong because the high mate has the delicate gene but hey suit yourself if you want to negotiate with a brain damaged high mate plus they have heat weakness in their survival overall it's not looking pretty for the high mate in these aspects I'm gonna give him a combat score of 0 and a survivability score of 1. But fret not my friends. In production you can say that they're awful at mining and plants. Other than that they have no good skills aside from socializing which is great for trading and recruiting other people. Which is not a bad thing I guess because the more you recruit people then the more people can work in your colony overall I can give them a solid 3.5 for this but a high mate shines so well in the cohesion of your colony which is unity complemented by their great social skill a high mate is very attractive that means they can get their partner as soon as possible which means more mood buffs. With their high libido, they can satisfy their partner. Also, a high mate can be seldomly seen having a mental break because of their high happiness. And their psychic bonding boosts the consciousness of their partner, which means more productivity. This is a perfect vibe for me in Unity. Overall, their versatility is only limited to one role, and that is the charismatic leader. But at least they don't suck at many skills. Overall, a 1.5 versatility for me. Alright, here's the lasers. Sinos who thrive in pollution. The funny thing is, it's the most versatile pawn up there. They are not even specialized in dealing with death. 
Now, first of all, we're going to discuss the first three genes that are important for versatility. The first one is psychic dependency. Like the Hussar, they need five days to consume any kind of psychite drug. That includes psychite tea, which is cheap to research and cheap to make. Unlike the Hussar, it's gonna be an easier one to attain. But the best thing about them is they can never be addicted to psychite. One such example is Flake and Yayo. I would prefer Yayo in this case. With the Yayo's buffs, this Sino can fight on the front lines with high maneuverability. Another gene that can be correlated to the versatility of the Sino is wake up impervious. That means that they will never get addicted to wake up. But I will explain later that this waster is more of a quantity over quality type. Lastly, pollution stimulus. Uh, this gene is not really needed, but whenever you are on a polluted terrain, wasters get a consciousness boost and a movement speed boost. It doesn't mean that they should live in polluted terrain. Now in combat, it's only the psychite dependency. So whenever they take psychite drugs, like say for example Yayo, their combat readiness scales up. But if you run out of Yayo, which is preventable with proper planning, and you only need like 12 Yayo throughout the year if you take it perfectly every 5 days, that's if you only have one waster, your Yayo can be used as a combat enhancing drug. Still, the dependency on Yayo makes this spawn not very high on the combat list, but at least 3.5. Now on purely survival genes, they have the super immunity, which means they recover much faster than an average baseliner. And this other one is total anti-toxic lungs, meaning that they can take the environment pollution, but not toxic related attacks such as poison or venom. They are also immune to rot stink. Another 3.5 for me. Too bad they don't have faster healing, as it would be the perfect combat pawn. And don't forget Yeo Maldens the pain. A waster is also good at production, but they lack the substantial quality of a genie. They have two poor skills, that means cooking and artistry, and are very awful at animals. But do not forget that Wake Up is a good drug, but a Sino is also limited to their passions and traits, so you can't really abuse. Plus the learning speed multiplier each day, which caps at 4000. That will be a 3.5 for me, as a waster prioritizes quantity over quality. Lastly, Unity. They are both aggressive and ugly. This makes them the most punchable xenotype out there. This will be a unity score of 1. Overall, its versatility is great but you have to rely on drugs. Now let's go to the xenotypes with abilities starting with impits. The dust devils. Now, let me tell you something. This xenotype is weak. so. Versatility is off the table, it's just like cannon fodder. Let me explain why. First, in combat, they do have an ability called Fire Spew. It's what the ability says. This forces the impit to spit fire. It sucks that it only has one charge and takes up to 5 days to recharge. Would have been great for combat. Another thing we have to consider is very fast runner. They are called the Dust Devils for this reason, because of the fire spew and the hit and run tactics. One thing to note though, they suffer from weak melee damage, but that just spells that you can capture people easily without killing them. Still a bad trait. And some traits that mesh with combat and survivability are fire resistance and slow wound healing. Fire resistant meaning they tank fire based damage. Now the biggest setback is slow wound healing. Not to mention the next pure survival gene that's a negative 
is weak immunity that means even a slightest cut that is left untreated will make the impid suffer both combat and survivability of the pawn is a one on to the productivity of this pawn they're only bad at agriculture you can set the impid to hunt because of their very fast runner gene at the same time they are great haulers and at least they aren't awful at agriculture overall the productivity of this pawn is a3 just because of the very fast runner trait now unity they don't have any sorts of malice around them even the horns that means they pretty much get along well with other colonies it all depends on the traits overall this versatility of this pawn is fine but they don't really excel at any roles and it's better to find just another Sino. another ability based Sino is the itakins fur-coated Sinos of the rim let's talk about their abilities first it's the animal war call with two charges that means you can make two animals berserk at the same time this skill may be a good distraction or the best one if there's a thrombo around as you watch the thrombo gore your enemies the animal will be berserk for 12 hours and it takes two seconds to cast it although the cooldown is around 15 days so at least two quadrums to recover two charges this skill by the way works on wild men too you can also use this skill to save yourself from being hunted they also have a strong melee damage that means they have advantage in melee combat but higher chance of killing the pawns instead another trait is naked speed which means the less clothes they have or armor the faster they are but this may deter you because some genes are contradicting this gene anyhow another complementary gene for the naked speed is robust which lessens the damage multiplier keep in mind though as low wound healing may deter you from sending out your yutaki into the front lines not to mention that their sleep rate falls much faster they have a hunger rate of 1.25 percent their furs and tail add cold tolerance by the way lastly they are psychically dull which means that they can tank the high psychic drone event of course i'm referring to the negative one overall the score for combat is a two while survivability is a two productivity wise naked speed can be helpful for hauling but sleepy gene can affect that that means that your yitikin may move faster but they have a longer sleeping time that means they can't be dependent on getting the job done Oh, did I mention that they are poor at mining and also great at ranching? That means this pawn is quite an asset in production too. But most of the time you can just make them hunt or tame animals. They can also tend your cows. Lastly, unity. Colony cohesion is not the Yitakin's strongest suit. They are mostly attracted to their fellow fur Sinos. Another thing is they are aggressive. Can't do anything about that. Immediate 1.5 for me. Now let's cut to the chase. The versatility score of this pawn is around 2. Naked speed can be good, but the sleepy trait doesn't cut it, man. Finally, the blood-sucking Sinos of the Rin. Personally, I hate this Sino, but I'm gonna give the most unbiased opinion of it. One thing's for sure though, I hate death resting. 
okay first of all this is the most versatile pawn out there but let's discuss the abilities first especially in combat first we're gonna go with coagulate which tends all wounds another ability is the piercing spine which shoots out bone from i don't know where but i just know it's from the body lastly the most important skill is long jump best maneuverability skill for picking off enemies or saving off allies after you carry them and save their asses they all need hemogen but i'll discuss this gene in survival so let's go for the combat oriented ones first another gene that complements the long jump is strong melee damage basically these sangophages are like roided neanderthals Another is Dark Vision, which makes them good ambush attackers at the night. Now let's go to the combat and survival genes, and we're gonna discuss some of them, especially in the survival side. First, our first archaic gene, which is Scarless. That means any permanent scars can be healed, just like the Luciferium. But the good thing is, you don't need to take it every 6 days or so i'm talking about luciferium at least carless will not let you die another is super fast wound healing that means they heal four times much faster than an average pawn psi sensitive is a good trait for a sangravage too since they can psi cast if you have the royalty enabled i meant the dlc robust gene is also good for taking several damage and lastly toxic immunity which makes them immune from all toxic sources including damage oh yeah i forgot to add fast runner and mild uv sensitivity for combat let's go to the bad genes regarding combat and survivability namely tinder skin which makes you take more fire damage than any other type of pawn they also run away from fire because of pyrophobia for purely survival genes, let's go to the hemogen first. Hemogenic means they need blood. They can hold 100 units of it. They drain at least 8 hemogens per day. And in order to replenish it, you can drink the blood of humans, any xenotype, except sangrophage. Well, using the ability called blood feed. Another way to obtain hemogen is to extract hemogen pack from prisoners or colonists and just like vampires they also sleep in coffins but this state is called death resting that means it by default your sangrophage needs to sleep every now and then but in a state of death for at least four days if you don't have death rest accelerators your sangrophage should not be disturbed unless it's really an emergency other survival genes include ageless non senescent which prevents birthday related diseases and they have the perfect immunity they don't get sick because they're sick already lastly the most important survival gene deathless now unless your brain gets obliterated or you get beheaded then your pawn will be in a constant state of writhing pain and agony if let's say for example you got your vital organ removed aside from your brain your pawn will not outright die you can just reinstall the important body parts such as the heart and the liver and then either they start death resting or if they death rested then they pretty much will wake up for combat and survivability, I'll give it a 5. You can't deny it since a sangrophage has too many utilizations when it comes to both of these characteristics. For production, they don't have any skill malice and don't forget about the fast runner. They also have low sleep which is they are awake most of the time throughout the day. That means getting stuff done, but not as effective as a waster or a genie. For one, they are not proficient at crafting, but only on social and research. Which you can say that 
its skill set and these two are strong. Another thing, despite low sleep, is that the Sangophage needs death resting. Also you can't make them addictions go away with Scarless. So thinking about wake up, abusing the Sangophage is doing you no good. Although they can still be great miners due to dark vision. Lastly, Unity. They can recruit just like the high mates, but they are aggressive. Yet despite being aggressive, they are also attractive. Meaning people will be in this weird relationship of being in love and abused. Another gene that I can add both here and versatility is the gene implanter. Meaning that they can implant their synegerm, but have a cooldown of 2.4 years. This means that they can copy Sangrophage genes from their ability, but casting it on cooldown will make the Sangrophage die. Now overall, I can say this is the most versatile pawn out there. So here's my score of 4.5. Thank you for watching and I hope this video is informative and please like, comment, and subscribe or you can even dislike if you want to support my channel. This is Sickly Shogun. Thank you and I'm out.